And Neil, we love talking about theories of consciousness and just get right into it and try to compare them and explain them, but I want to take a step back and be sure that we're all talking about the same thing. So if we look out at the collection of stuff in the world that we need to explain by a theory of consciousness, what are some of those categories uh, in general and in specific? This is a very good question to ask because it's really the first duty of any theory is to define its explananda, define what are the explanatory targets. Yes. And if you don't do that, you end up speaking past each other. Yeah. And my own perspective on this, I try and the general picture as I see it, is that there are a number of different explanatory targets that, that theories can aim at. One is what you might call global states of consciousness. What is the difference in creatures like us that we are sure can be conscious, or as sure as we can be, uh, the difference between conscious wakefulness and sleep, deep anesthesia, coma, uh, conditions where everything changes and consciousness may go away entirely. That's important. Then the second broad category, again, in human beings, potentially other animals, is conscious content. How do we account for what we're conscious of at any particular moment? And there's a richness to this, which I think is overlooked in many laboratory experiments. It's not just are the dots moving left or right, but what about <laughs> conscious experience in the wild, you know, right here and right now, the sense of being in a, in a large space with a periphery and a mm. center. So this brings in this whole tradition of phenomenology in philosophy, mm -hmm. which is the nature of experience as experience. Mm. You know, we need uh, a richness to that kind of explanatory target that is often reduced away by the constraints of lab experiments. Yeah, there's a very important distinction because um, phenomenology is often put aside because it's very difficult to deal with. And the idea of a, a neurophenomenological uh, project, uh, Francisco Vallela and, and Evan Thompson and others, um, it, propose that, but, but it's very difficult to do. It is difficult to do. I mean, that actually characterizes the, that's the empirical program that my group is trying to follow, really following in Varela's footsteps, uh, taking the phenomenology seriously as a guide to interpreting uh, the neural um, data. Mm. And it also points to another distinction, explanatory target that you often hear about, which is phenomenal consciousness and access consciousness. Mm -hmm. So access consciousness is typically uh, about those things we can report verbally, I can talk about, that, that I have cognitive access to in some sense. And maybe that's all there is, but there's a suspicion that that's only a subset of conscious experience itself, which might be broader, richer, uh, deeper in some way than what my cognitive apparatus mm. has access to. Mm. Another explanatory target, I think, is the self. I mean, it's part of conscious content, but understanding the nature of the self is, I think, a particularly important explanatory target for consciousness. It's personally very relevant because it's about what it's like to be me, but it also encompasses things like the nature of emotion, the nature mm. of a first-person perspective, the nature of personal identity, and also free will. I mean, here's another vast question mm. that, that transcends any single discipline. Mm. What do we talk about when we talk about free will. All of these things, I think, come, up, come yeah. under the rubric of self. Yeah, and uh, emotion and free will are very, very good points because both of those are studied as independent, uh, I call them um, philosophical scientific jungles of their own, and so you just want to exclude them. But uh, you really can't because normally you have a theory of consciousness and then see what what, uh, uh, what emotion or free will is derived from your theory. But uh, the way I'd like to see it is can emotion and free will help develop the theory? Because you know those exist, and can that feed back and, and either drive a theory or modify a theory? Right. Well, they ex so emotion exists in us. Free will depends what you yeah, mean, whether right, it exists right, right, or right. not that's in a, us. It's a jungle. Um, but, but yeah, I think that also points to another task for theories of consciousness, which is function. Now, why are we conscious? What is it good for? Mm -hmm. If we assume that it evolved, then why did it evolve? What do we do in virtue of being conscious that we, we can't do without consciousness? And then finally, I think the other question that 
theories of consciousness need to explain is the, the distribution of consciousness out there in the world. Mm. Right? Where do we draw the line? What systems not only are conscious in the moment, but have the capacity to be conscious, what the philosopher David Rosenthal called creature consciousness. Mm -hmm. That leads into whole sets of other questions about consciousness in AI, consciousness in synthetic biology, um, consciousness in non-human animals, insects, and so on. I think all of these are important questions, uh, but the, the, and they all kind of ramify out from this starting point of human consciousness being an example of a, of a system where we can take as a starting point, a benchmark, right? We know consciousness happens in human beings. Mm. And from there, we can begin to, to isolate its properties and realize what's contingent about being human that may not be true in general. And this is always a big challenge. It may be that the particular way we humans are conscious is just the way consciousness has evolved to be in human beings. And we'll make a big mistake if we assume that that is representative or necessary. For instance, language was tied to consciousness very closely by many people in the past. Right. But I think we'd make a big mistake in both ways. If we withhold consciousness from non-human animals or even newborn human infants on the basis of the absence of language, and we can make the opposite mistake if we too eagerly grant consciousness to things like language models on the basis that they have something like language. 